10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, July 5th, coming on with an update about Hurricane Barrel, which has uh, made landfall early this morning, uh, just around 7 a.m. Eastern Time, just to the northeast of Tulum in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Barrel has continued to move inland. It's now centered about 100 miles to the east-southeast of Progreso. That's also a little under 700 miles to the uh, east-southeast of Brownsville, Texas. But Barrel is moving off steadily to the west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. The maximum winds have decreased as the storms move inland, estimated right now to be around 85 miles per hour. But Barrel is going to continue moving Moving across the Yucatan Peninsula with the center re-emerging into the Gulf of Mexico uh, later today or tonight. And uh, we'll focus first on the impacts here in the Yucatan, where Barrel is centered right now. We still have a hurricane warning in effect from Puerto Allen to Cancun, including Cozumel. Uh, still the potential to see life-threatening winds, uh, storm surge inundation of one to three feet uh, within that hurricane warning area this morning as the center of Barrel continues to move inland. We have a tropical storm warning in effect from Cancun around the northern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula down to Campeche, expecting to see tropical storm conditions in this area, as well as storm surge inundation of one to three feet above ground level. So everybody in the Yucatan Peninsula needs to stay in that safe place through the day today until conditions uh, uh, clear in that area. Uh, also looking at the potential for heavy rainfall with uh, isolated uh, totals as high as 10 inches in portions of the Yucatan Peninsula as barrel moves across that area, widespread rainfall totals of four to six inches. So now let's turn our attention downstream and we're expecting barrel to uh, emerge out into the Gulf of Mexico later today and then move west northwest and then turn northwestward and regain hurricane strength after it weakens to a tropical storm later today, but regain hurricane strength and potentially be an intensifying hurricane as it moves closer to the coast of Texas. Now, we have a, a northward turn here, and this is a, 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 the risk associated with a, a storm moving parallel to the coastline means that just a small change in the track of the storm can mean a big difference in where the center of barrel makes landfall. So if it follows our forecast track, it could come in here into the south Texas coast. However, if it moves just a little to the right, it could come up here into the middle portions of the Texas coast in the coastal bend region, or if it moves a little to the left, it could come in into portions of northeastern Mexico. So don't worry too much about the exact uh, forecast track of the center, there's a broad risk of seeing that hurricane, a core of a hurricane making landfall with multiple life-threatening hazards, the hurricane force winds, life-threatening storm surge, heavy rainfall and flooding along from northeastern Mexico into the southern and uh, lower and middle Texas coast. So let's take a look at that risk. Here's the chances of hurricane force winds occurring over the next five days. And again, you see that broad risk from northeastern Mexico and Tamaulipas state through places like Brownsville up to Corpus Christi. Those are the areas that are at risk of seeing those hurricane force winds as we go from Sunday into Monday. And the time of arrival of the tropical storm force winds is going to be uh, Sunday during the day Sunday or Sunday evening across uh, northeastern Mexico and the Texas coastline. You can see this is the chance of tropical storm force winds covers a much broader area, much wider area at risk of those tropical storm force winds, even to portions of the upper Texas coast and down farther south into uh, portions of eastern Mexico. Now on the storm surge front, there is an increasing risk of life-threatening storm surge, uh, especially as we move northward along the Texas coast, the vulnerability to storm surge increases, especially in these back bays, places like Baffin Bay, Cor uh, Corpus Christi Bay, Matagorda Bay. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, storm surge watches that will likely be issued later today for portions of the lower and middle Texas coast. If we move on to the rainfall risk, we're expecting a widespread rainfall totals of four to eight inches across northeastern Mexico, including much of southern Texas. This is the flash flood risk over the next five days, especially focusing on the time frame from Sunday Monday and Tuesday, and you can see this broad risk, a level two out of four for flash flooding risk, including places like Houston, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, Brownsville, Laredo. Uh, we'll be able to focus in more on the uh, higher areas of risk for heavy rainfall and flooding as we go through the next several days. Uh, also want to touch on the risk of rip currents. Distant hurricanes can cause rip currents that can be deadly. We're expecting the rip current risk to increase dramatically across much of the Gulf Coast uh, from Florida all the way over to Texas and Mexico as, as the wave field associated with barrel begins to impinge on the, the Gulf Coast beaches. You can see there's already a moderate risk of rip currents today in portions of the Florida Panhandle to the Alabama coast and on portions of the middle Texas coast. So be sure to follow the advice of any uh, local officials, Stay out of the water if the warning flags are flying and please be safe in the ocean. Um, just a couple of things. So for folks farther downstream along the coast of northeastern Mexico and Texas, know what your risk is. Know if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone. 
uh, because you may be asked to evacuate by local officials. You need to know where you're going to go, how you're going to get there, what you're going to take with you, how you might need to help any friends or neighbors or relatives who might need help evacuating and getting to a safe place. Determine if you live in a flood prone area from heavy rainfall. Uh, know what your plan is going to be if flooding threatens your home. Uh, and again, identify the structural risks that your home might have in terms of uh, structural risks to wind. If you live in a mobile home, you might be uh, asked to leave your home even for tropical storm force winds. And then find your trusted sources of information, rely on forecasts from here at the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov, find your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov, and know the difference between watches and warnings. Make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings through a NOAA weather radio, ensure wireless emergency alerts are turned on on your cell phone, find your local source, trusted sources of information, and listen to any advice that you're given by your local officials. So again, just to wrap things up here, the key messages for Barrel, we're expecting dangerous conditions winds, storm surge, and heavy rainfall continuing over the Yucatan Peninsula today as Barrel moves across that area. Uh, residents there should consider sh should be sheltering in place until those dangerous conditions subside. And there's an increasing risk of hurricane force winds, life-threatening storm surge, heavy rainfall along the uh, northeastern Mexico, lower and middle Texas coast beginning late Sunday and into Monday. Interest in these areas should uh, monitor the progress of the of Barrel and updates to the forecast. We are likely to issue storm surge hurricane and tropical storm watches for portions of the Texas coast and even northeastern Mexico later today. And again, I want to focus in on the rip current threat that's going to be not just along the Mexico and Texas coast, but along the entire Gulf Coast. We're going to see an increasing threat of rip currents as we move through this holiday weekend here in the United States. So please stay tuned for more information. Uh, uh, come back here to hurricanes.gov. Again, find your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. We'll be back with more information on Barrel later today. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.